Hi guys, welcome again and uh, this time, this is what I woke up to actually um, from San Pedro de Atacama, there's a big massive volcano on the other side but it was covered in clouds so I couldn't see anything. Um, but uh, this is me leaving the town like that. The night before it was just drenched. Um, you can see the rivers, you know, all brown dirt and stuff like that but it was absolutely soaked. So in the morning I went for a bit of a ride and had a look around, it was still a bit hazy early in the morning and it was still dark and, and then I had to get fuel because you have to get fuel in this city and uh, there's only one gas station and it's a big massive long line. <laughs> so I had to wait about 30 minutes at the gas station uh, to get served. Um, you sort of get used to that. So you don't, with, with gas stations and stuff like that, especially Chile, Argentina, after a while you just... Um, you just get used to uh, the, you, you, you're going to get gas and you just put in your head, okay, it's going to take 30 minutes, you know. <laughs> you know some of the guys in front of me or behind me, and it, it took them, you know, sometimes they had to wait a day or two. So you just got to uh, put that in your head. But right now, my goal, it, since leaving your uni, um, uh, my goal was Patagonia and that's all I could think about. I couldn't get out of my head and, but the first stop was going to be Santiago because I needed, I knew that I needed new gloves and I knew that I needed, um, uh, I needed new gloves and I also knew that I needed um, some, some thermals because, you know, riding up here and plus in other places, I'd already realised that the, the REI thermals that I got that were well rated just weren't good enough. So my goal right now was just basically getting to Santiago, Chile, and I'm going to be, I was going to be spending about seven days there in Santiago. And the reason for that was Chris was going to meet me there as well and spend a couple of days. And I needed new tyres, I needed to get my bike serviced, and also my helmet. And, and what you'll find, at the moment I've got my lid up and I'm only doing like 50 or 80 kilometres an hour. Um, but what you'll find with your helmet is the little cogs that, because you, you, a lot of the time you want to put the visor up because you want to feel the breeze on you, you know? It just freshens you up and stuff like that, and especially when it's hot. Um, right now it's very cold because I'm very high up, but once I get back down to the coast again, it's like, you know, 30 degrees, like 90, 90. So you, you want to, and the problem is that after a period of time of putting your helmet up and down, the little, the little uh, teeth, uh, on your visor on the side, they wear. And so after a while, you know, if I was, if I went over a certain speed, and you might see it happen, but if I went over a certain speed, um, like I'm doing 82 kilometers an hour now, which is about 45, 50, it's about 50, um, uh, you'll find that the, the helmet, the visor just keeps flipping down and it gets really annoying. You know, um, and I've got a Schubert uh, 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 Adventure helmet, the new the new Schubert Adventure. This is the second one I had to buy. The first one I um, I had to replace. Um, and uh, and so and and I'd gone through a couple of shields. I got smashed with a rock on one shield on the side, and uh, so it was time to get uh, get a whole new thing. And and I knew that Schubert had a there was a retailer in Santiago, I just didn't know whether they had the parts. And um, so basically everything I was thinking about now was just getting, because uh, if you look at, I mean, you look at this ride, it's, I mean, it's pretty exciting at the moment. It's pretty cool. Like everything you're seeing is pretty amazing. But once you get back down, probably another 20 miles down, it, you know, you go, you go right back down to sea level. It gets really hot, and it's pretty, you're riding through deserts. Um, and with my tyres and all that sort of stuff, I still had, I had plenty of tread left on them. But the thing was, it was going to be my last opportunity, and I had to San Diego all the way to Ushuaia. You know, riding straight. It's ten days riding, basically. So. Um, so yeah, so my, my goal was to get to uh, Antofagasta, uh, which is a little port city um, uh, on the on the uh, north coast of Chile. I uh, stop along here. And look at that; it's pretty amazing, hey? I mean, there's just nothing growing here, you know. Um, I'll stop here for a few minutes. As you can see, I've got my spare battery on my tank bag. 
I, I had problems. The next few days, I had problems with my camera. It just it was it was recording. It looked like it was recording. I've got a Drift Ghost, a really good camera, but it looked like it was recording, but it actually wasn't. So here's some little snaps from that area. That's that's a little bit further down. That snap just parked on the side of the road. It looks a lot more beautiful than what it's see, you see there. <laughs> but uh, it was a pretty. You know, the mountains were a distance on either side, so that's another sort of like a, a panorama of that. It's zoomed in though, so it doesn't look so good. Um, I might adjust that actually. I might put it, just put it back so it sets back and sets it back a bit further because it does look a bit grainy there. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, the plan was to get down and, and, and then go to La Serena, which was another reasonably short ride and then from La Serena to get to San Diego where I booked an Airbnb and apparently had a 100 megabyte a second download speed. Uh, that's what it advertised. And um, so I was really looking forward to, to uh, getting there and, uh, and, um, and getting everything organized from there. And you know, from San Diego, there's a few little day trips I could do, which were gonna be a bit of fun. Um, so yeah, and then Chris was gonna stay for about two or three days before he headed off um, again, uh, we headed off on the same day. He headed off to uh, a little seaside town for a couple of days of partying. I wasn't really interested in that, I just wanted to get going. Um, it's a sh pretty shocking picture of me, but who cares? Um, yeah, so basically, um, the, the whole plan was to get some miles in for the next few days, and then from San Diego, you've got another massive stretch to get down to the south. Uh, 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 of Chile and there's not much adventure riding there but that's but once you know a, another a one day's ride past San Diego uh, and you're getting right into the deep of it and then you're then you're basically in Patagonia after a full day's riding about five six hundred seven hundred I think I did about 900 kilometers from San Diego to get it all out the way and it was a similar roads to this which are not that exciting so once you got down to the, the valleys, it was just basically de deserts, not really much to see um, until I actually got to that port city um, of Antofagasta, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, I'm pronouncing it wrong. Um, yeah, so I, I didn't really get to see much in San Pedro de Atacama. Um, it, it rained a lot. I had some dinner there and then had a look around in the morning. It looked fantastic. It would have been great for some off-roading. Um, but you know, my plan was to get going. I wanted to see the volcano, which I didn't see it at all because it was covered in clouds the whole time. Uh, and apparently, it's covered in clouds nearly all the time. You basically got to get up real close to it. But I had seen probably a hundred volcanoes by now. Anyway, probably not that many, but I'd seen my, my fair share of them anyway. But at, 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 at San Pedro uh, de Atacama, that this mountain just goes up from nowhere, so it's just like a, a like a like, like what you'd see in a, a, a South Park drawing of a mountain, just a straight thing, and that's pretty much what it is. It's pretty impressive. So yeah, just cruising mode. Um, I have, um, you, you know, I had, um, I only had about five to six hours of riding today. So I, but after I'd had a look around the city, I didn't leave until probably nine o'clock in the morning I'd left, so I wasn't gonna be getting to uh, Antofagasta until the afternoon, and that didn't really worry me. Um, I booked a, a decent hotel. I, I'd had a couple of days of off-roading, so my gear, I remember, you, you'll notice this when you go on a trip, you'll, you'll un, like my routine is, I get to my hotel or whatever accommodation I'm staying at, I get all my gear off, I, I then, um, I get the first the, the first things I do is obviously a check in, get all your gear off your bike, and then and then basically from there, you, um, you I charge everything. So I've got I've got this thing, this power thing from power core from Anchor, where I plug all my devices into. It's a great device. It's a little bit heavy. It's five kilos, but it will charge your laptop for four or five four. Three, three. It'll last you two or three days of full charging everything. Um, and the, the beauty of it is, is that a lot of hotels have, you know, don't have a lot of power points and a lot of hostels and that. So you only have to plug that one thing in and I can charge up to four uh, USB devices plus my laptop uh, directly from that. So basically it takes me about two rounds of charging. So 
I get to the hotel, I plug everything in, I get everything charged. And the reason why I've got my, that own, your own separate device for charging, and you can use those little bricks you can buy, but you want to get something with a, with a really good voltage rate because you want to be able to charge stuff quickly. So I would charge the first round of devices, and then by the time I got back again to the hotel, so I'd normally get to the hotel, unpack my gear, check in, um, get everything organised, everything charged up, all my devices, have a shower, and then head out and do a bit of tourist stuff, come back, do some work, have something to eat, uh, and um, fall asleep and wake up the next morning and get going. Usually before I'd fall asleep is I'd just get all my bags ready again for the next morning because you don't really want to be doing that first thing in the morning, having to pack everything. But here, where I, when I arrived at the hotel, it had a really nice balcony with a really good sea breeze, even though the car, it took me 45 minutes to check in. Again, nobody helped me out get my bags off my bike. And the guy insisted once I was in there and had all my bags in there, like I'd put them on the trolley and walk the trolley up the deck and all that into the hotel. And then once I've got the trolley, he would not let me not let him take the trolley up. And I was really pissed off with him because he didn't help me out front. But I just let him do it and I just gave him like a couple of dollars, a cheap two dollars or whatever when he got there because I was really annoyed that it didn't help. Plus the, there was two people at reception um, and there was one person being served and this girl just ignored me the whole time. She was right in front of me, just did not look up at all. She knew I was there. I mean, I'm not an idiot. Uh, but she didn't look up to me at, at me. So I waited there for 20, 25 minutes until this guy had finished all his crap that he wanted to talk about. And then I had to, uh, then I checked in. Then I got to my room, did all my gear and stuff. And then I still had a bit of stuff on the bike. So I took my bag down to get all the rest of the stuff from the bike. Um, and then, and then took a, took a, then I asked them to, as I went down to reception, I asked them to look after my bag because I want to do shopping and go for a swim and all this sort of stuff. So about three hours later, I got back about 6, 6 30 p.m., asked for my bag and they didn't know where it was. And the girl was still sitting at reception. The other guy was trying to help me find my bag um, and we couldn't find it. Like 20 minutes we were waiting, trying to look for it. We went to the closet rooms, everything, couldn't find it. And then the porter, because the porter had disappeared, the porter came back. And he said, I oh, know, I gave it to who? To you. And it's this girl at the desk. And she said, oh, yeah, it's just right here. It's right next to her. And I just couldn't, like, honestly, I wanted, if I had any powers to fire this woman on the spot, I would have done it. It was just so pathetic. But anyway, um, it was nice. So I actually soaked all my gear in the bath and, uh, and hung it up on the balcony because it was a really breezy night. It was quite warm and it wasn't, it wasn't humid. So I thought that it would dry and it did dry. So in the morning, like you should have seen the bath, it was absolutely ridiculous. There'll be a picture of, of the bath at the end that I'll show you of the, the, the massacre at the end of it. It's just dirt, brown dirt. And, and so what I was saying is you'll, you'll go out of your hotel room, go for a walk or whatever, and then you'll come back to your hotel room and go, what is that smell? But that's just you. <laughs> and um, you'll find that you're, you, know, you don't notice it when you're walking around. So a good thing to do is to get some disinfectant spray because you're not going to be able to wash your gear a lot. So what you do is get a can of disinfectant spray that smells quite nice and then just get out the balcony or whatever you can outside and spray all your gear at the end of the day. Give it about 15, 20 minutes to dry out a little bit and then spray all your gear. Washing your socks is always a good idea. Um, you know, if you, I, I had three pairs of, uh, two pairs of socks. So I used to rotate them and they, I'd need to wash them about every three or four days. So I get about two days out of each one, they'd smell, but you know, at the same time, you just have to do that sort of stuff. So yeah, um, that's a little note. The other thing about your bike, if, if you've got to park your bike out front or in a car park out front, empty your boxes, your side gear and all that, just empty them. And a little, a little security note is leave them open. So if you've got nothing in there, don't lock them. Because if somebody comes to steal stuff, you don't want them bashing open your 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 bags or your side cases to find there's nothing in there. You might as well let them be able to open it and find there's nothing in there. You know, some idiot might try and break something, but you've got to take the risk. It's a lot smarter to to actually leave them uh, empty, empty and open, so that if they want to click them open, they can just click them open. They'll find there's nothing in there, and they hopefully won't bother. I didn't have any problems the whole trip. The only problem I had with my bike was when I went on a tourist trip one day and someone tried to steal my number plate because it's got Florida on it, I suppose they wanted that. Um, this is the view from the balcony, pretty nice. I went for a swim straight out there. It was beautiful. It was a little bit rough, but because like, the water was absolutely freezing, but it was quite refreshing. 
So and there was a swimming pool down below, tennis courts on the right. It's quite a, a quite a beautiful setting. The city, it is a port city, a fishing village, but uh, it is very, very, very cool. So um, I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed this little video. I'm going to try and keep them fairly brief. They'll get a little bit more exciting um, in a couple more videos once we get down south, and you'll be able to see some of the uh, some of Patagonia on my rides, which is pretty cool. And I've also got some 360 degree videos up there that are pretty cool and then some of them are already up there from, from Patagonia and that. So yeah, so this is a really a really nice place, there's a shopping centre there on the left hand side and I went there and tried to find some, uh, some parts for different things, some electronics. Uh, the things you'll wear out of is your, your USB cables and you've always got to get good quality ones because you want to be able to charge your things. Um, at a decent rate. If you get really poor cheap quality USB, it might take you 10, 12, 14 hours to charge your phone, for instance. Okay? So try to always get good rated ones and look before you go which what, what's what's the what's the power of what is you and amp out that you need. Okay, alright guys, talk to you soon. Hope you enjoyed.